Today we're going to be looking at Pascal's Law. Now, what is Pascal's Law? Now, Pascal's Law basically states that in the absence of shear forces, the pressure at a point in a fluid acts equally in all directions. Okay, so this basically says that let's consider a little box with a fluid inside it. Now we're going to take a little point and there's going to be pressures acting on this point as a result of the rest of the fluid, all the other points in the fluid. Now the pressures as a result of all these points are equal. And that also means that the point right beside it is going to have kind of the same pressures as a result because the pressures again are equal. So we're going to attempt to prove Pascal's law. The first thing is to say, let's look at our fluid. This here is our fluid of density P, or rho. Okay, now we're going to draw a little triangle inside our fluid. Okay, we're going to assume that this triangle is really quite small. Obviously at the minute it takes up quite a lot of the area, but we're going to assume that it's quite small. And we're going to look at all the pressures. There's going to be pressure on that side, pressure on that side, and pressure on that side. And we're going to look at all those pressures and eventually we're going to prove that all of those pressures have to be the same. Okay, so we're going to say that this one is going to be called Pn, this one is going to be called Pz, and this one's going to be called Px. Okay. We're going to look at that in just a sec. Okay, so let's magnify this triangle so that we can see it. There's our triangle. We said that there's a pressure there, there's a pressure there, and there's a pressure there. Well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to define some coordinate axes because we like coordinate axes. We're going to define a coordinate axis. So we're going to say that that's going to be our x direction. Up is going to be our z direction and then into the page is going to be our y direction. So x, z, y. Okay. Now we're also going to therefore say that we know one height or one dimension and one dimension only of this fluid and we're going to, or this, this uh, element in this fluid and we're going to say that it's this height and this height is going to be called dz. So that's the height in our fluid. Okay, so the pressure, this pressure, which is acting this way, we're going to call that px. The pressure, which is acting upwards, we're going to call P Z and this pressure which is acting normal to this sort of edge is we're going to call this PN. Okay. Now one of the important things that we're going to have to do in order to prove that these pressures are all the same is we're going to have to resolve some things. One of the things we're going to have to resolve is forces. We like resolving forces. Okay, but uh oh, we've got pressures, we don't have forces. Well, let's think, what is a force? A force is basically a pressure multiplied by an area, or force over an area is a pressure. So we have pressures, we need to find some areas, and then we've got forces, and then we can resolve our forces, unlike resolving our childhood issues. Okay, so, well, let's think about this. In the z direction, we've already got one dimension. We've got dz, which we'll just label like that. In this direction, well, we will eventually put it in terms of dz, but for now, we'll just call it dx in this direction, so that this length is dx. And this length here, well, that's going to be tricky. So for now, we're just going to call that L. Okay, and obviously this is an element with a volume, not an area, so it's got to have a width into the page. So this little width here, we'll just call dy. Okay, so the force as a result of this pressure here is going to have to equal that pressure multiplied by that area. 
That area, of course, being dz multiplied by the width dy. F of n, the, the force as a result of this pressure, which is normal, we can call pn multiplied by l multiplied again by dy, which if we want to put it in terms of dz, we can call pn multiplied by something multiplied by dy. Now, what is this something? What is L actually equal to? L is actually equal to, if we want it in terms of dz, uh, dz over sine of this angle here. If we just put an angle in there, that angle there. Okay, or the other way of writing it is sine theta multiplied by the hypotenuse length is dz. You can go back and do your own trigonometry, but that's what we're going to say. So we're going to call that dz over sine theta. Okay, next we're going to say this pressure, what is that in terms of? Well, that's going to be that pressure in that direction multiplied by dx, which is that, multiplied by the width into the page, dy. Which again, if we want that in terms of dz, we can call that pz multiplied by dz over tan theta multiplied by dy. Again, therefore, stating that dx must equal dz over tan theta. Okay. So, what I said we wanted to do was to resolve forces. So, we're going to resolve forces in the z direction. So we're going to look at all of the forces that are happening as a result of the z direction. Well, the first thing that we need to say, we need to look at the elephant in the room and say, we've got an element of this fluid with a density. It's got to have a weight. What is the weight of the fluid? What is the weight of this element of fluid? Well, weight is equal to, effectively, volume by density by good old gravity. Now, the volume of a triangle is the area, which is a half dz dx, multiplied by the width dy. So our weight is going to be equal to one half dz dx dy rho g. And note that that rho is the density of the fluid. Next, we're going to say what we've got weight, we've got Fz, Fz is acting vertically upwards, so that's going to be a really easy thing to mention. We can say that we've got Pz dx dy, which equals Pz dz over tan theta by dy. And what else have we got? Well, we've got this normal, where a component of this normal force is going to act outwards. So what component of this normal force acts downwards? Well, it's through the angle, it's going to be cos of that. So we've got Fn by cos theta is going to act downwards. Weight acts downwards. Fz acts upwards. This is going to act downwards. And this is going to be equal to the pressure in the normal direction multiplied by dz multiplied by dy over sine theta multiplied by cos theta. Now, last of all, when you resolve forces, you have to say it's going to resolve and therefore equal something. So we're going to give this element an arbitrary acceleration. We're going to say that as a result of all these pressures, this element is going to travel either upwards or downwards. But the point of it is we're going to assume that it ha is going to have an acceleration in an upwards or downwards direction. So we're going to give it a resultant force. And we're going to say that that resultant force is going to be, again, the mass of the object multiplied by whatever the acceleration is. Okay. So, now we need to resolve these by putting them all into a nice long equation. So we're going to say that the things that act upwards are Fz, that's minus weight, that's minus Fn 
cos theta, and that's going to equal our resultant force. Okay, so now we're going to actually put these things in. We're going to say that the pressure Z Now, another thing that we can say, uh, just to simplify this a little bit, is that actually that PZ is, we've done the DX bit already, that's going to be PZ by DZ over tan theta by DY. We're going to move this over to that side. So now we've got the PN is equal to half by now what's common dz dy should be a dx there as well dx these three are all common the density is common so this is what our equation will look like we've said that the pressure as a result of the upwards the force as a result of the upwards pressure minus the component of the force as a result of the pressure on the normal which is acting downwards will equal weight plus whatever the acceleration is. Okay. Well, if you look here, we've got dz and dy, dz dy, dz dy, dz dy, dz dy. We're gonna cancel all these out. That should still be there. Now you might also notice that cos theta over sine theta is equal to one over tan theta. So you could group those tan thetas together and bring it over to that side. And going back to what we were saying in the beginning, dx tan theta, well, we said that dx is dz over tan theta. So that has to equal dz. So now we've got that the pressure in the upwards direction minus the pressure going in this direction is equal to a half times the density of that multiplied by this. This elemental dimension that we knew at the beginning, the height. Now we said, what if we consider this element to be really, really small? What if we consider that this dz, this height, we're going to make this smaller and smaller until eventually it approaches a point? Well, that would mean that dz is limiting towards zero. What happens when we limit this towards zero? This all becomes zero. So pz minus pn equals zero, or rather, pz equals pn. So if we go back to our triangle, We've said that, that pressure there is equal to that pressure there. Now that was as a result of resolving vertically. If we resolved horizontally, we would find that Px equals Pn. Again, by making the dimensions smaller and smaller until we've reached a point. So by doing both of these, we can say that the pressure acting vertically is equal to the pressure acting horizontally, which is equal to the pressure acting normal. I.e., consider our little point, all the pressures are constant, no matter which direction you look. Again, bang, going back to Pascal's law, in the absence of shear forces, the pressure at a point in a fluid acts equally in all directions.